<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Micropilot. Today I'm going to give you a tour of the C42 Microlite because the ground's a bit too boggy today, even though it is still good enough to fly. Okay, so let's go have a look at the C42. Hey guys, so in previous videos you've seen me fly this C42 Icarus and that's what it is, a C42 Icarus. They're made by Comco Icarus in Germany. It's got a tricycle gear configuration which is quite funny because the actual brakes we use when we fly are like you'd find on a bike on a tricycle. It's a two-seater aircraft and it is a microlight. Now some people might get confused by that because in the UK microlights are specified on their weight. so this doesn't have to be one of them kite things that you push backwards and forwards that you'd normally think of as a microlight. Those aircraft are called flex wings, but these ones are three axis microlights. And this aircraft being a two seater, two seater microlights are classed up to a maximum takeoff weight of 570 kilograms. So I'll just show you around the aircraft now. On the wings, it might not be really obvious but they're made of like a canvas type material which again it saves on weight etc and these can be replaced they can be took off took back on this like just under here they've got big zips that you can undo them clean them out on the inside when they get a bit dirty etc i didn't mention a little bit earlier is there's two main variants of the c42 there's a b and a c the b ones are sort of basic as basic as they get um, this one is a C, that one over there is a B. So that one over there is a B variant, this one's a C variant, which means it's got little winglets and there's more composites and just other things just to make it a little bit better than the V variant. I'm just going to give you a little quick walk around of the aircraft now, so if you just follow me around then. See, like I say it's made out of a bit of a canvas material. These are the wing tips. See, they're they're a good height <laughs> off the ground. Okay, so these are the ailerons. These are what help us turn in the air. Now, when this one points up, the one on the wing on the other side points down. And as any av geeks out there know, this sort of kills lift on this wing, making this wing drop, and the other wing will have a bit more lift created on it, making that wing rise. So in this case, if this goes up, the aircraft would turn to the right. If we move down a bit, part of one of the main things we check on our pre-flight inspections are these little bolts that hold the ailerons on and being a fundamental part of flight like the elevators, the flaps etc are, they've all got on the bolts, they've got little safety wires attached to them, I don't know the specific names for them but that's one of the main things we like to check. We like to check that they're nicely greased up so they move and that those safety wires are in there. On this section here, this is the flaps. If I just show you for a second. That. There's a little lever inside the cockpit that we operate the flaps with. It's not in a normal place, which is one of the main sort of features that people notice about the C-42 aircraft. Over here, we've got our um, <coughs> fuel filling point, nice and red, can't miss it. If you see this bit here, on other aircraft, not in this aircraft, but just behind this section there can be a parachute fitted, so there's a big red handle in the cockpit you can pull. And these aircraft being light enough, they can carry these parachutes and the, the aircraft is light enough for a parachute to help us glide down to the ground. and. That mainly helps in either forced landing situations, either on water or over really built up areas where you don't want to be flying into it, you want to just sort of drift down on top. 
like I say, not all aircraft are fitted out with them, but it is an added option. Okay, over here, this is the tail section of the aircraft. Okay, this is what helps us control our rudder, so our yaw axis, and our elevators, which basically make, make us point up or down. Coated in the lovely Flight Sport Aviation logo, which I think looks really cool. Again, this back tail section is made out of a bit of a canvas. And if you come around here, there is the elevators. Okay, so this moves up and down. So once it moves down, more lift is created at the back of the aircraft. And then around the center of gravity on the aircraft, this will be pushed up, making the nose of the aircraft point down. Okay, so this is the rudder on the aircraft. Again, one of, one of the three sort of really main flight controls of the aircraft. Okay, so... <laughs> Nicely done. And that's why we're not flying today. <laughs> okay, so let's just carry on. All around the aircraft you can see how we've got, we've still got all these bolts with their little safety pins in them. Okay. Let's open this up and I'll show you the insides of the aircraft. And like I said previously, you'll see how minimal the components are in there to help fly it, okay? A bit stiff because these aren't normally opened a lot of the time. Okay. So if you have a look inside, see all the bits just inside. The actual outside of the aircraft is mainly aesthetics. This plane could fly without this outside body. Um, up the middle is the main spar that holds most of the forces and stresses on the aircraft. And if you have a look just inside here, these are all the pulleys and the controls for different control surfaces. And like you might hear in more modern aircraft, they use what's called fly-by-wire. So electrical inputs are put onto the controls and then all those signals are sent to actuators to then move the ailerons, etc. But these use just good old pulleys and bits and bobs. Um, the other, the only other main bit to show you in here is this big thing right behind the passenger seat. That is the fuel tank and as you can see just up the back of it there's markings for how much fuel is in there in litres. As you can see just where it is now it's on about 25 litres. Okay so that's the sort of inside the back section of the aircraft. So welcome to the cockpit of the C-42 Hyperlight. The main controls to fly this aircraft are the control column in the middle. So left and right controls the roll and controls the ailerons on the wings. Backwards and forwards controls the elevator. And here is the brake, so just like a normal bicycle brake. And then there's a little catch on the front of it that sets the parking brake. On the top are the trims, so if you click the top one, the aircraft will trim forwards and it will trim backwards. So there's an electronic trim and there's the, an electronic trim tab on the elevator of the aircraft. The other main control is in between our legs, which is a bit unique to the C-42. So in between our legs, we have the throttle of the aircraft. So all the way back is nearly no power. So the engine is idling. And all the way forwards is maximum power. The other main control is up top here, is for the flaps. So again, looks a bit more like a bicycle lever. So all the way back is flaps fully down. And then the middle stage is what we mainly use for descent and takeoff. Okay. So that's most of the main controls for the aircraft. The only other one is down by our feet, which is pretty standing on most aircraft. In, and that controls our rudder, like I've shown you before. Okay, so the only other things to show you really are what's in front of us, what the pilot uses to fly the aircraft. So we've got our airspeed measured in knots. We've got our vertical speed, so it tells us how quickly we're climbing or descending. We've got our RPM, which tells us the, rev, the revs of the engine. That's pretty standard, like you'll see it on your car. We've got our altimeter, which tells us how high we are from the ground. 
and we set that depending on the change in air pressure on the day. So we'll set it to sea level to know how high we are above sea level using our Q and H. We'll use QFV to know how high we are from the airfield, so we'll just twist that. Like now, I've set it on zero feet above the ground, so that is 990 for the QFV for this airfield right now. Got our compass, magnetic compass, it's pretty standard, and our engine controls. So this tells us our oil pressure, this is our oil temperature, our cylinder head temperatures, how much fuel we've got, and our Hobbs meter, which tells us the amount of en the amount of time on the engine, etc. And we've got another push to talk over here, which is normally what our instructors would use in the air. So in the middle, we've got our mags. We've got two sets of mags in the aircraft to be safe. So each cylinder has two spark plugs in it. Got our um, comms, intercom, on and off switches. Our auxiliary fuel pump as a backup which we have on when we're normally below about a thousand feet definitely on takeoff go arounds and landings our strobe lights our landing lights our comms so that's what we use to talk to you to air traffic control so we'll set that and our transponder so that squawks and that gives off our position in the air so people on radar control know who it is and exactly how high they are etc and then the big red button right next to the master key slot the big red button, if you push that, will start the the uh, starter motor on the aircraft, powered by the battery, and then that fires the engine, as long as the mags are turned on, and then that fires the engine, and then it just runs on its own. That's pretty much it for the microlight. The only other things are a choke and cabin heater, which down here, there's little pipes, which... Um, air just moves past the exhaust pipes and then the hot air is then blown out into the cockpit. With the cabin heater we can't have that on on takeoff in case there's an engine fire and we get all hot fumes blown into the aircraft but apart from that that's the cockpit of the C-42. So the interesting thing about the Rotax 912 is what this aircraft is fitted out with and which is what most microlights are fitted out with is you, it's got a dry sump at the bottom of the engine which collects oil when the engine isn't in use and there's a pump that then pumps that back up to the oil tank and then that is then used to circulate around the engine. So then if we check the oil on the aircraft, if the oil is below the minimum that is allowed for the aircraft then what we'll do is we'll twist the prop and then that gurgles the oil so that basically because it's a dry sump, it'll push all the oil up in the dry sump back into the oil tank. And as soon as all of that oil is pushed back up into the tank, it will be forcing air through. And then the air comes through the oil and makes like a burping kind of noise. So I'll demonstrate that to you now. Okay, so what we do is we come over, just take off the cover for the oil cylinder. Take off the lid for the oil cylinder. i right, putting them up here and then we take out the dipper thing and as you can see it's just above the minimum level for what's allowed for flight okay but what we'll demonstrate here is that's the level it's at now and then I'll gurgle the engine and then the oil should be higher than it is right now Okay, so let's check it now. And look, it's considerably higher than it was before. It's important to note not to do this on aircraft without being trained because some aircraft don't require this and it could actually start the propeller. Alright guys, thanks for watching my video. I plan to do more interesting videos in the future like what's in my flying bag, a thorough pre-flight inspection and there's going to be more videos of me flying coming up soon. Also, a 100 subscribers special. So keep keep your ears out for that one. Like and subscribe, do all the usual stuff and thanks for watching.